My name is Aiza from the Innovation Consortium, and today I'd like to share with you about cycle pliers, what they do, and how to use them in our daily maintenance works, or any fittings you're doing there, any fitting work. Um, to start with, I'd like you guys to see the physical view of what a cycle or the physical image of what a cycle plier is. And here it is. These are what we call cycle pliers. The two. These are cycle pliers. Uh, what they do, uh, they are just special pliers which we use to install sack clips. So the name is derived from, from the sack clips, the work they do. So they are sack clip pliers. What, what is a sack clip? First of all, uh, the, the component you're seeing here, these are locks but they are called circlip locks because they are in a circular form. They are circlips, they are called circlips. And the pliers we use for, the, the pliers we use for installing these circlip locks onto maybe shafts or fan covers or bearing housings uh, are these pliers here. So there are two types of these pliers, they are the external and the internal pliers. The external, when you compress at the end, at the end of the levers, the heads open, as you can see. And for the internal, they are like this. Whenever you compress the end, the heads close, as you can see. For this one, when you compress, the heads open. These are external. For the internal, when you compress, the heads close, as you can see. So basically, when I have my side clips, as you can see here, this is what we call, this is the, the external side clip. So whenever I place the heads, you can see these two rods, they enter inside the holes, as you can see. As you can see, when they enter inside, when I, when I compress these two levers of the pliers, you can see it widening. It's in a spring form. It widens and it comes back. So after reaching the slot of the shaft or the housing or the bearing housing, when you press it widens, then it, it contracts or or it goes back to its normal position to lock any, any, anything you're, you're trying. It could be bearing, it could be a gear on the shaft, it could be a sprocket on the shaft. So whenever I compress, I widen, then I push it on the shaft, then I release, it goes back to its normal position, then it locks inside the groove of the shaft uh, to lock maybe the, the pulley, the sprocket onto the shaft. There is another one, the external. So for the external, remember we said, whenever I compress at the end, the gap decreases. And when it decreases, as you can see, there is a gap. But when I compress, decreases. Then there, it means the size of the diameter has decreased. So I can remove it out of the, the bearing housing or anything or any casing. I can remove it out. And after removing it out, I release, it goes back to its normal position. The same and vice versa. If I'm just fitting it in, I compress, as you can see. I compress, I push to maybe the bearing housing, then I release. It enters the grooves of the seat inside the bearing housing. So basically, these are the two, the two main types of cyclic pliers. Take a physical example of how and where we use these cyclic pliers. We shall take a closer look. This was a lob pump, uh, but it's having uh, a cyclic over here onto the shaft part of it. So to remove this cyclic, we shall use the external pliers, cyclic pliers, to remove this. So as, as you compress, 
it will be widening when it widens your feet you feed the pliers into the holes of the side clip as you can see there are holes all side clips have these holes so you feed them into the holes then you compress at the back of the pliers then it widens you remove it off the groove where it has been then after you release it goes back to its normal so it's spring loaded is somehow springy whenever you release it goes back to its natural or to its original size when you com when you compress it widens you fit it on into the lobe you release it fits into the groove still the same applies when you're removing it when you compress at the back you're widening them for the external type basically when you widen <coughs> when you widen you're removing widen you're expanding it so as you can remove it off outside the groove then you can remove whatever you're removing from this lobe either a bearing or anything the same applies to the internal we shall change to this side of the lobe as you can see this end there are bearings as you can see this is a bearing housing and inside this bearing housing there are already side clips so for this particular type for this particular housing you can see this component here over here this is what we call a side clip so removing it we shall have to use the internal circular pliers so we push them inside So that's it for, for the external side clips. We use this very type, the external side clip plier. When you compress, it widens at the heads. And for the internal, when you compress, so basically for, for the internal, take for instance, you're having a housing when you compress, if you're having a side clip inside here, when you compress, you compress the side clip and you remove it out of the housing. It's, it's more or less the difference or the opposite of the, the external side clip pliers, basically. So they serve the same purpose. The only difference for the internal, it removes internal side clips out, out of these housings. And for the external, it removes external side clips of the shafts, uh, of rods, anything, any fittings, basically. As we had explained earlier on, so side clips are just locks uh, on maybe axle shafts or bearing housings. So we can take a physical view of this gear train. We are having these external side clips. Why we call them locks? When I pull out this gear, when it, when, when it reaches this side clip lock, it will stop at the side clip lock, as you can see. We are taking a physical view of where side clip locks are applied, or where we use them. As we had said earlier on, it's in the bearing housings, or on axle shafts, or on drive shafts, any, any, any drive mechanisms, or in a bearing housings, it's where you find these side clip locks. So, to take a, a physical example, we're having this gear train of a lathe machine. As you can see, we're having this external side clip lock. So, we're having a gear. So, when I push it, or when I pull it outwards, when it reaches the side clip lock, it won't get off the shaft but the cycle block will act as the stopper 
where this gear will be stopping. The same applies to this. Uh, the same applies to those cycle blocks in the, in the bearing housings or on the fans or in the shafts, anywhere. So the only difference is some are external, some are internal. If I want to remove off this one, I'll have my external circuit pliers. I place it into the holes, then I compress, it widens, then I remove it off the shaft. If I'm installing it, the vice versa, I widen, then I push it onto the shaft. These shafts normally have the groove where this side clip sits. I widen, then I push it to the groove. Then after it sitting or aligning with the groove, I release so it can't get out. Remember, it has gone back to its normal size. It's inside the groove, but it can't get out. It can't go forward or backward. So it's locking the gear from getting off this shaft, as you can see. So basically, we're explaining the cycle pliers. That's how they work. They move hand in hand with the cycle clip, the cycle clip locks. So roughly, that's it for the cycle pliers. I remain Isaac from the Innovation Consortium. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.